Did you miss the hat? I know it's been almost a year since I've done video with a hat on. You know, my hair has grown really, really long. I haven't had a haircut, so it was time to put the hat back on so it's a bit more manageable. But 5,000 plus fragrances, and these are the 20 that I keep wearing. Part one, find out what they are coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in, it's Sebastian. Yes, there's 5,000 bottles all around the studio here. Lots of them, over 5,000 bottles actually, and the collection keeps growing. But still, I keep coming back to the fragrances that I love and enjoy wearing over and over and over again. There's 20 fragrances here in this video with one bonus option. And next week I'll air a part two of this. We'll make it a total of 40 fragrances and then we'll move on after that. But today it's the 20, the first uh, most worn 20 fragrances in the studio of over 5,000 bottles. Let's go ahead and get started with uh, one of my most favorite fragrances, Psychedelic from the house of Javoy. You're familiar with this. It's a patchouli bomb, a fragrance that was featured in my scent club kit number three. Three? Yeah, three. Anyway, this is a really, really awesome ambery, chocolate cakey patchouli fragrance. One of the best from this house and one of the best patchouli fragrances out there. So the way that the, the patchouli creates the chocolate cakiness is the amber notes, vanillic notes, balsamic resinous notes. And it doesn't smell like chocolate, but it creates a chocolate cakey effect, basically. But a really earthy, delicious, sweet, vanillic, ambery patchouli, psychedelic from the House of Jaboy. So this next one is a fragrance that was recently featured in Scent Club Kit number 9. This is Dolce Melodia, this one right here. Uh, yeah, this has become a favorite fragrance of mine. Absolutely love it. It smells great. It lasts a long time. It's a combination of fruits and flowers with ambery vanillic dry down, some woods as well. And then, of course, it creates a bit of a powdery effect. The lingering power is great with this one. It's just a really, really nicely done fragrance. And one of my favorite discoveries of 2023. And I keep wearing it because I absolutely love it. I know some people say it's a bit feminine. It's a fruity floral. But when you get past that, it's an amazing, amazing fragrance. And uh, one that definitely needs to be checked out if you haven't already. So it's Dolce Melodia from the house of Sospiro. Check that out if you don't know it. Next, going to the house of Thomas DeMonico. This is Raw Gold from 2023. Yeah, this has uh, definitely been a favorite fragrance of mine. It smells great, it has great longevity, super amazing trail. And once again, we've got patchouli in this one, but it's kind of meshed with vanillic honey touches. Uh, this particular version compared to the previous edition uh, seems a little less honey than the last, but still very similar to the other. And, and also less animalic than the previous version as well, which some of you like, but some of you hate because you prefer the animalic touches of the last one but it you know it, it depends on what you like if you still have your previous version i'd say enjoy it but also savor it because it is no longer being made because this is the version but still i like both versions in fact i really enjoy raw gold and definitely one of the fragrances i wear quite a bit of i've gone through so much i really really love this stuff and i've turned it on to a lot of people hopefully you guys have been able to check that out that was also featured in a scent club kit from some time ago but moving on to the house of Serge Lutens, this is Fia Nagui, this one right here. Oh man, this is so good. Last time I was in Paris in January, late January, I couldn't find any bottles of this one. It's a really fantastic combination of pine, incense, dried fruits, balsam fir, spices, bay leaf, and vetiver. To me, it smells like a really cold, frosty kind of uh, pine forest effect in here next to a church. So you're smelling the church incense kind of uh, floating in air. You're smelling the pine trees, the frosty cold snow capped. And then inside a cabin, you're doing something with fruits or something. And the combination is super amazing. It's definitely my favorite fragrance from the house of Serge Lutens. And if you haven't gotten your nose on it, please do. It's the one that I keep coming back to from this house. I absolutely, absolutely love the combination and super intoxicating. So Fia Nagui from the house of Serge Lutens is a super amazing fragrance. One of the first designer fragrances on this list, it's Tobacco Vanille from the house of Tom Ford. It's a super fantastic, smoky, ashy tobacco meshed with vanilla spices, holiday spices like cloves, and then the, maybe perhaps cinnamon, nutmeg, and there's also some dried fruits in here and a little bit of cacao or cocoa. Really, the combination is great and definitely one of the best from the house of Tom Ford. 
you know, they haven't done anything with this one. They keep coming out with intense versions and, uh, yeah, you know, now they have the Parfum of Oud Wood, but they've left Tobacco Vanille alone. I mean, I like the way it is, but I could I could see an extreme version or a Parfum version of this because it's, it's definitely one of the best. I absolutely love it. And hopefully they'll come up with something uh, like a flanker for this one where it's even further intense. But to me, this has become a great holiday fragrance for me because it does smell like the holidays, even with that tobacco smoky ashiness against the vanilla. Super amazing. It's Tobacco Vanille from the house of Tom Ford. Then moving on to the house of uh, Maitre Parfum at Gantier, it's Ombre Perso, this one right here, one of the best ambers out there. Absolutely love it. It's powdery, it's balsamic, it's spicy, it's aromatic and resinous. So the idea of a very resinous, balsamic take on amber, a delicious powdery golden amber with spices and aromatics is really, really great. And this is one of the best. It's been around since the 80s, created by Jean Laporte, who created La Chazan Parfumer, sold that brand and created this house. And again, to this day, it still smells great. I absolutely love this particular amber fragrance. And if you haven't gotten your nose on it, please do. It's Ombre Perso from the house of Maitre Parfum at Gantier. Then moving on to the house of Diptyque, it's Benjoin Bohème. I've got both editions here. If you haven't tried Benjoin Bohème, please do. It's definitely one of the best benzoin fragrances and benzoin typically creates amber fragrances. And this is definitely an amber like Maitre Parfum at Gantier's Ombre Perso but this is totally different, a different kind of an amber. It features benzoin, styrax, sandalwood, and patchouli with some spices, but it's really cozy, vanillic. Benzoin is a kind of a vanillic kind of a, a resin. So it creates a vanillic effect, not smelling sugary sweet like vanilla, but a great, great fragrance. Uh, this is a brand spanking new bottle. The, the previous bottle ran out. Last bottle, I have a full bottle here, and this is the brand new one. So I've got a full uh, video comparing these two, if you wanna go catch that but it's Benjoin Bohème from the house of Diptyque. Then moving on to the house of Guerlain, this is Angelique Noir. This has become such a great favorite of mine. It's a different take on vanilla. It's not spiritus double vanille. This one has that Angelica note against the vanilla. Angelica creates some kind of a bitter greenness against and powderiness against the vanilla, which is kind of a very unique smell. Along with pear, there's a bit of a fruity pear touch in this one and jasmine, caraway seeds and cedar. Caraway seeds, I think, come through, but they don't smell like B.O., which some people associate with it. It just adds some spice to this fragrance, contrasted with the angelica note in this and the vanilla. It's a really super amazing vanilla, very unique smell. It smells like vanilla, but then the angelica, very, very unique characteristic against the vanilla and makes for a very original smell. Smell. Really wonderful offering, Angelique Noir from the house of Diptyque. Do let me know if you're a fan of that one. Then moving on to the house of Maison Crivelli. It's not patchouli magnetic. I do enjoy patchouli magnetic. I love it. I do enjoy this one. I still enjoy this one more than patchouli man magnetic. And also, this is also easier to wear than patchouli magnetic. You have to be in the right mood to wear patchouli magnetic because it's so overwhelming. This is Iris Malikan. And once again, it's vanilla with oris this time, oris butter, it's very buttery. It's kind of a green as well. We've got galbanum in here. And then there's a leather effect that happens as well, which is a really great, very intoxicating combo of notes together. And there's also mastic resin thrown in. So if you like the idea of a powdery, buttery oris with vanilla, galbanum with its green bitterness, and then of course, leather and mastic, you've got to try Iris Malikan. It is super fantastic, absolutely love it. So Iris Malikan, from the house of Maison Crivelli. Super amazing. Let me know if you're a fan of that one. Up next, we've got a fragrance from the house of Unui Nomad. It's Jardin de Misfa. This one right here. Are you familiar with this one? This was actually featured in Scent Club Kit number four. Again, one of my favorite fragrances and one of my favorite of this house, Unui Nomad. It's a not a very hyped brand, but oh my God, every fragrance of this house is really, really quite awesome. Some I enjoy more than others, but they keep releasing really knockout amazing fragrances. This features notes of dates, rose absolute, rose essence. There's some saffron here. It's kind of like a Middle Eastern dessert drizzled with rose water, kind of an effect, really wonderful. And the thing I like about this one, it's a bit tart. It comes alive in the heat and it doesn't kind of choke you because it's got sweet notes in here. It's a super amazing fragrance. I absolutely love wearing it. Jardin de Misfa from the house of a Nuit Nomad, do let me know if you're a fan of that one. But moving on to the house of Atelier d'Azor, it's Rouge Sarre, this one right here. It's still a 
great fragrance, guys. It is so good. It's one of my favorite from, favorites from this house. I started enjoying Lune Feline from this house, but ended up really embracing Rouge Sarre, which has become my favorite of this house. I'm hoping they would come up with an extra de parfum version of this one. But in the end, it's kind of like a Middle Eastern fruit dessert drizzled with like a kind of a sticky syrupy honey or some kind of a syrup or something. But it's in the end vanilla with dates, plums, cinnamon, patchouli, Peru balsam. So it's balsamic, it's ambery, it's sweet and fruity and super delicious. A bit reminder of holiday dessert as well. It got a bit of a holiday vibe and it's warm and spicy, super gooey and amazing. Rue Sare, it's fantastic. If you're not a fan of that one and haven't checked it out, please do. I think it's an amazing, amazing fragrance. But moving on to the house of Frederick Moss, it's got to be on here. It's still a really great fragrance. I do reach for it quite often because I love the way this smells and it's just a very intoxicating smell. It's, it was a love at first sniff. It's from the house of Frederick Mollet's Portrait of a Lady. Portrait of a Lady is rose, patchouli, incense, cloves, raspberry. There's some uh, amber touches in the base and it's got some warm spices coming in as well. But the rose is just beautiful, very spicy rose. And it's a bit smoky, of course. It's kind of earthy with the patchouli. And that fruitiness is very, very interesting contrast here. It's awesome. It's a really, really great fragrance. Sure, it has gotten butchered a bit thanks to Estee Lauder, who's watering down the fragrance. It's totally different from when the fra fragrance first launched. But to me, it still kept the way the fragrance smells, and that's what I like about it. It's a really addicting smell. It's a portrait of a lady from the house of Frederick Baugh. So we're going to the house of Laboratorio Olfativo, and I'm featuring both of these tied together because they're, they're very similar. I enjoy them both as well. This is Laboratorio Olfativo Vanna Gloria and also YSL's Baby Cat. Very similar fragrance here. It's a combination of incense with uh, vanilla and then also a suede leather note that comes in to create this very intoxicating vanillic fragrance that adds this smoky incense touch with the suede leather. So it's olibanum. It's, it's an incense resin or incense uh, note. So it's smoky, kind of resinous. There's also tonka here. There's saffron to create a bit of leathery effect with the Baby Cat, there's actually a leather accord in there and there's also cedar wood, but both of them similar, very similar, really addicting, really wonderful offering created both by Dominic Ropian. Uh, the first one that came out was Vanna Gloria, then Baby Cat followed uh, like a year after, but both of them are really, really great. The problem is you can't really get Baby Cat here in the States. You can get Vanna Gloria, but uh, not very highly or widely distributed either. So, um, but both of them are great. Hopefully you've got your nose on both of these fragrances or one or the other, because if you have your nose on one of them, you know what the other one smells like. Next, going to the house of Marc-Antoine Barrois. It's Ganymede, this one right here. So Ganymede is a addicting fragrance like Baccarat Rouge 540. It's got a similar quality, but not using similar notes created by Quinton Biche. It's suede leather, violets, mandarin orange, some mineral notes. There's some musky notes. There's Immortel here as well. The combination is really, really great. It's a fragrance that's not like beastly, but it clings on and stays on and it smells fantastic and it blends with your own body chemistry to create this special fragrance that's really got a really great trail. It's not like a really loud trail, but to me, the fragrance is an amazing creation, one of the best and I keep reaching for it. It's an awesome release from the house of Marc Antoine Barois. Probably this house is known for this fragrance, Ganymede from the house of Marc Antoine Barois. Do you know that fragrance? Let me know. And this next fragrance, everybody know, well, maybe everybody doesn't know it, but most people know it because I recommend this one quite often. It's Dior en Parfum from the house of Dior. Yeah, this is uh, definitely one of the best. And I I see that Fragrance Buy still has bottles of Dior en Parfum. If you haven't bought your bottle, it's around 180 some dollars there. It's, uh, it's about 150 in Europe. So it's euros, obviously. So versus the dollar price, it's almost similar. I mean, if you can get it for less expensive price too, but I think this is definitely one of the best designer fragrances out there. In fact, it is the best designer fragrance out there. At least for me, I absolutely love this stuff. It's Dior. Uh, Dior is a fantastic fragrance, which actually, actually I think it should move into the Dior Privé collection because it's that good. But it's iris notes, it's sandalwood, it's leather, it's ambrette, it's oud, a bit rose, but super fantastic powdery, lipsticky leather fragrance that's to die for. So this is Dior en Parfum at uh, number 15 again. I didn't mention earlier, this is not a ranked list. I'm just giving you 20 options. And then next week, I'll give you 20 more. This is Tabak Ski from the house of Caron. This has been a recent favorite of mine. 
And again, I've went through a 50 ml bottle and I'm now starting on a 100 ml bottle. It's another tobacco fragrance, but this time we've got some warm spices with tobacco and lots of chocolate here. It's the chocolate, cocoa, labdanum, benzoin, myrrh, ambroxan, jasmine, iris, frankincense, along with cinnamon bark and of course that tobacco. The tobacco is a bit smoky, a bit ashy against all these really wonderful notes. It does create a bit of a holiday spice vibe, but once again, I love the combination, it smells super fantastic, and it's again to tobacco with the chocolatey touch. Whereas tobacco vanille was tobacco and vanilla, this is tobacco and chocolate with warm spices, just like the other. So, really, really great. It's Tabak Exki from the house of Caron, wonderful offering. Next, going to the house of Lumari, it's Port Hole. You know, a lot of these fragrances have been featured in my scent club kits. This is one of them. And uh, I usually end up picking some of my most favorite fragrances in the kits because I'm absolutely in love with them and I want to share it with everybody. So Porthole launched two years ago almost and it was an instant love and I was so grateful I was able to feature it in Scent Club Kit. They've sold out now. Hopefully they'll bring bottles soon and uh, you guys can get your bottles because I know it's been a very popular fragrance. It's pineapple with bergamot, salt, ginger, passion fruit, white flowers, caramel, white musk, and woods. It seems like it's going to be marine. It's not necessarily marine. It's more of the saltiness against the fruits and the caramel and all that good stuff that's in here. Really, really fantastic offering. It smells great in the heat, by the way. That saltiness and the fruitiness together, intoxicating combo. Porthole from the house of Lumari fantastic offering from that house. Next, going to the house of Papillon Perfumery, it's Salome. This is probably one of the most animalic fragrances on the list. I absolutely love this animalic fragrance. It smells fantastic on me. It's very old school vintage vibes, but in a modern way, and it smells really, really powerfully oomph. So it's Castorium, Hyrax, Cumin, Jasmine, Oak Moss, Carnation, Styrax, Tobacco, Hay, Rose, Orange Blossom, Patchouli, Birchwood, Bitter Orange, and Bergamot. To me, it smells like a really oomphed up, amped up take on Jean de Spray's Bala Versailles with more animalics, because that fragrance has been reformulated and things like that. With this one, oh man. If you like that fragrance, you gotta get your nose on it. it. To me, it reminds me of that, but then some. It's more animalic, but it's tolerable. I can wear it. I'm not the biggest fan of animalics, but this animalic fragrance, very, very addicting. So this is Salome from the House of Papillon Perfumery. Then the 19th fragrance I'm talking about is another 30 brand spanking new bottle because I go through this stuff a lot. It's a great fragrance to travel with. It's also a kind of a dumb reach because it's an afterthought kind of a thing. It's basically musks and ambroxan types, um, type of molecular notes. And so basically spritz away after a shower and smell great. It's, it's an interesting kind of fragrance that leaves a trail, but it's not like this really intense, overwhelming fragrance. Some people might complain about this one because it is a, a fragrance that would uh, make like if you're you can't smell it because you might be anosmic to it kind of a thing so it's isoe super amber green musk ambrette amyl salicylate pear but super amazing i've smelled this off of people and the, the reason i really enjoy it is because when i smell it off of other people it smells really great and i think it's because it hits your chemistry your own musk and it creates the really super sexy musks and that's why i really like it because when i overspray it i can totally smell it off of me and how i leave my trail again it's not a a beastly trail but it's definitely a really great trail and super sexy trail and that's what i like about it so it's another 13 from the house of le labo and then we're ending the video with the part one with the baccarat rouge 540 extra yes i'm still addicted to the smell didn't start out that way, but I absolutely love Baccarat Rouge 540 Extra. It is a really great fragrance. Now compare this to Bac uh, to Le Labo's Another 13. They have similar kind of notes, but this is a lot beastlier than that. This one, I think, you don't have to overspray. You can create, you know, create a trail with this, uh, with uh, only like three, four sprays. That one, I probably do 10, maybe even 12. I like that. It's a shower clean. This one is musky, almondy, ambergris, ambroxan combo with saffron, jasmine, and a wood accord. Really, really great fragrance. Absolutely love this one. And again, I was putting fragrances here in this list that are not discontinued selling. Uh, maybe perhaps I'll do a discontinued version of this video because I do have a pretty big collection of discontinued fragrances, but for now, these are fragrances you can buy. But the last fragrance is Baccarat Rouge 540 X-Ray from the house of Maison Francis Kirkjian. Anyway, stay tuned for part two next week. I've got two parts of this video, then we'll move on to some other videos. But let me know your thoughts on these fragrances and also let me know what your most warm fragrances are in your entire collection. Again, I have over 5,000 bottles all around me. It's a, it's, a, it's a huge collection, massive collection. But these are the fragrances I keep coming back to because I just love them. I'm addicted to their smells.
And so let me know what you're addicted to in far, as far as your collections go. Let me know how many fragrances you have and which 20 or 10 or 5 that you keep wearing over and over and over again. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. Okay, we do have a bonus option here. It's a layering duo that I always, always recommend. It's Nishane's Hachivat along with Nishane's 100 Silent Ways. Have you guys tried this layering duo? It's quite addicting and I do wear this uh, layering duo quite often. I like the fragrances individually, but it becomes really explosive when you combine these two. First of all, Hachivad is that kind of screechy, woody, metallic, fruity woods fragrance. It's a fruity kind of a, like a Aventus take, like, a, you know, inspired by Aventus or it doesn't even smell like Aventus. It's just kind of utilizing similar notes. So it's kind of on the masculine side. And with 100 Silent Ways, it's more of a fruity, floral, woody, amber floral kind of a thing. And so it's got fruits and also it's got vanillic touches. So you're adding this kind of softness to the screechiness of the Hachivat. And of course, you've got fruits on both sides and it's creating this explosive intoxicating fragrance with a really really massive trail if you haven't tried this combo please do it's a really really great layering combo and it'll satisfy any of you any of you that enjoys really ex intense fragrances like really overwhelming massive big time projecting fragrances and things like that so do try this and let me know come back and let me know what you think about it but the combination is super amazing and i love doing this combo if i want to stand out with my fragrance become fruity, woody, you know, ambery, floral, all that good stuff. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. See you guys later. Bye.